are you charged with? That's a really good question. I'm charged with being the head of an organized criminal group, which is in charge of recruiting girls to make TikTok videos to steal the money from the TikTok views. Recruiting girls to make TikTok videos and stealing the money. So it's really a financial crime? I, it looks that way. And it's very interesting because the girls who they've identified to add to the file are saying that we're not victims of anything and this isn't true. But the state believes it's true. And the state thinks that I, as a 35 year old man, woke up. I was already extremely financially successful. I was already a father. I was already very well known. I had no financial motivation. I have no criminal record. It's not my personality profile, but I woke up at the age of 35 and decided to make girls do TikTok to enrich myself with the pennies that I would earn from TikTok views. So in the United States, the, I think the belief is that you were charged with human trafficking. Yeah, that's human trafficking because what you do is you force a girl to work against her will for financial gain. That's human trafficking. And their justification for this is that girls do TikTok. Some girls I know who they found who say they're not victims have TikTok accounts. How do you force someone to do TikTok videos? I guess the prosecutor is going to have to explain that, isn't he? Uh, it's a very interesting scenario I'm in. And I'm inside of Romania, so I have to show a degree of respect to the Romanian judicial yes. system and I have to show a degree of respect to the situation I'm in, but the overall charge is that there's an organized criminal group. There's a group of us. I'm the head of it. My brother is the below me. And we use the lover boy method to convince women to do TikTok videos, to make money so that we can steal the TikTok money. So there's no, just to be clear, you are not accused of pandering, of pimping, of no. forcing women to have sex with anybody. No, not forcing them to have sex, not, for, not restraining their uh, movement, not stopping them from living a full life, but the fact that we are somehow convincing them to have TikTok. Very interesting. I don't and, think... But, but, but there's no actual... I'm asking you this because I, I do think it's a widespread belief that you were accused of pimping. Yeah, no, that's nothing to do with any of this case. Absolutely nothing. And it's kind of scary because the crime in itself of human trafficking is a unique one because they can ignore the statement of the victim. So the girls have come forward and said, this is insane. You've just picked us because we're near Andrew and we're his friends. But the whole idea of the crime is they can say that she's under, she's brainwashed, right? She's under duress. So you can ignore her statement. State says she's a victim regardless of the fact that she says she's not a victim. So. It's very interesting because the difference between sex and rape is consent, right? Right. But they remove all of that. They're like, nope, you're a victim. No matter what you say, we're deciding you're a victim. And they've chosen them. And of course, these girls do nothing pornographic. They've never had sex with anyone, nothing to do with that. So they've picked TikTok. So it's scary. Imagine you're a full grown man anywhere in the world today. They can find two girls who have TikTok on their phone, which is every single female on the planet. And they can accuse you of forcing them to take the TikTok money. And even if the girls say they didn't do that, this isn't true, then you're still a, you're still a human trafficker. But, but force, what does that consist of? Forcing someone to do something, are they accusing you of using violence or? No, they're accusing me, and this thing, they're accusing me of using the lover boy method, coercing them by being nice. The, and, and by the way, these charges presumably are public, so. They're public and this is extremely serious, but if you actually analyze the overall case against me, they're saying that, Andrew and his brother, by being nice men, convinced girls to have TikTok accounts and then take the money. And it's very interesting because inside of the entire case file, there's not a single financial transaction to us for money. What are the penalties? They're extremely severe, five to 10 years in jail. And I've already served coming up now seven months in a form of jail. Um, they can only- So you are essentially incarcerated right now. Absolutely, I'm on house arrest. And that counts as jail. You can only be held six months without charge. I was initially picked up, thrown in a cell without charge. And I think the intention of the entire investigation at that point was to find the crime because they had very, very weak evidence. They contacted 2000 people who know me or knew me. They tried very hard to convince some female somewhere to come forward and say something bad about me. The media machine, which works hands in hands with the justice machine, as you know very well, did exactly that. In fact, they offered bribes effectively. They'd call up ex-girlfriends and say, if you have anything bad to say about Andrew, we can pay you $50,000 for the story. And they tried very hard. They didn't find any evidence of anything. Uh, they then released me on house arrest. And then two days before the legal limit in which they had to drop everything, they charged me with whatever they had from the beginning, which is very little. And now we have to wait for the Romanian judicial system to analyze the file and 
God willing, throw it away. How long did you spend in jail? I was in jail for 92 days in a Romanian jail cell. What was that like? It was certainly an uh, interesting experience. Um, I won't lie and say it was easy. It was certainly very difficult. The uncertainty of it, it's a very uncertain situation to be picked up on just before New Year's Eve and thrown in a cell without charge. And I'm asking different prison guards and different prisoners, how long am I going to be here? One person was like, I've been here two years. I was like, have you been charged? He goes, yeah, but I haven't gone to court yet. Like everyone's been there for years. I thought I was going to be there for years. And it certainly takes a mental toll on you. And, and I think jail is a different experience when you know you're innocent. When I, there was a guy in there for murder. He's like, yeah, I murdered someone. I'm in jail. You can kind of, your soul and your mind yes. can accept the punishment for a crime. But when you actually done nothing wrong, I think jail is a lot harder. Did you know why you were there? Not initially. So for the, about the first two weeks, I never actually got told in English what I was accused of because I was arrested on December 29th. There's New Year's. What were the circumstances of that? Yeah, uh, December 29th, 5 a.m., the armed guards ran in this house. Uh, they spent all day searching the entire house. They're very interested in electronics, as most federal agencies are. And then they put me, they took me that evening and said, we're going to go and put you in jail for 24 hours. And after 24 hours, you see a judge and the judge will decide if you stay in jail. And the judge decided I should Wait, stay in jail. What did you do? I mean, did you make, who'd you call? I, I had a lawyer and my lawyer came and he said, we need to analyze the case file. We need to see what they have against you. You're being accused of human trafficking. It's like human trafficking. That's insane. Who, when, what? I went to jail and then I was given all this paper in Romanian. I don't speak Romanian, although I live here. And then I was waiting for the translation. So I think it's about two weeks before I finally got the papers in English to understand why I was in a jail cell. And then I really understood how insane the accusations were. What is human trafficking? Yeah. So the overall, under, my understanding of it, they're saying that human trafficking is when you convince a woman to do something she doesn't want to do for financial gain. And there's different methods you can do that. You can do that through force. And you can also do that through How emotional that, coercion. I think most people, just speaking from the American perspective, most people believe that human trafficking is effectively slavery, selling human beings. That's what, and that's what I believe as well. Absolutely. And this is the thing that's so interesting. When you finally end up the enemy of the matrix and they use the legal system as a weapon to punish you for having an opinion, you realize how subjective the law is, right? Because it can be a weapon. When you have something subjective, you can just pick and choose. So if they sit and say, ah, human trafficking is a woman doing something for financial gain against her will via emotional coercion. Well, he knows these two girls. They have TikTok Emotional account. coercion? Convincing her. That's what I'm accused of because they have no proof of me doing anything wrong. So they said, he's convinced these girls to do TikTok for money. The girls have said themselves have said, this is not true. And the state is denying their statement saying, no, you're brainwashed. It is true. And I went to jail. So how is the state, if, so the state is trying to coerce the women. So how is the state not committing human trafficking by the same definition? Well, absolutely. It's very interesting. It's very interesting that you can sit someone down and tell them they're a victim when they say they're not a victim. <laughs> you're a victim of being coerced and we're going to try to coerce you into conceding you were coerced. Co exactly. It's a very interesting scenario. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, it's, it's a very interesting scenario. And I, I would, and it's up until this point, no judge has looked at the evidence of the case. So up until this point, I've been to court a bunch of times. But the only reason I was in court was to discuss my preventative detention. So under Romanian law, if you being free can impede the investigation, you should stay in jail. So the judge agreed that, yeah, maybe if he's free, he can damage this investigation because they're trying very hard to get something on this guy. So I've done a bunch of jail time. And now it just begins. The judge is going to look at the case. And like I said, God willing, I still have enough faith in the Romanian judicial system that she's going to look at this and go, this is not a crime. Or you're aware of the media coverage of this, however. So I'm, you're in jail for 90 days or yeah. more, and the rest of the world is talking about you. Do you know what they're saying? They're saying very heinous things, and I would hate to come across as a conspiracy theorist, Tucker, but I kind of have a feeling that this might be something to do with my influence and an attempt to slander my name. Perhaps I'm crazy. But the fact that they chose such a heinous crime, and they reported it so heavily, and they won't shut up and keep repeating basically a slander attack day after day after day, also considering the fact that other people who genuinely commit heinous crimes have far more favorable press coverage. I don't want you to think I'm a conspiracy theorist. Please, Tucker, I would hate for you to come here and call me crazy. Yeah. But something very strange about it. And I think the... What, when Jeffrey Epstein's friends call you immoral? 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the goal of it is certainly to slander my name, and uh -huh. I, I like to see it as a litmus test. I like to see it as an intelligence test. Anybody who wakes up and looks at me and goes, he's a human trafficker because of TikTok, those, they're fully gone. So, but, but from the West, <laughs> can just defend the average news consumer in the West. Sure. Andrew Tate, kind of an outlaw, yep. lives in some palace in Romania, yep. wherever that is. Yep. And he's been, and Romania sounds like the kind of place where human trafficking is like the main industry. There, a lot of it happens here. That's what's so crazy about it, right? <laughs> right. What's so crazy is if, if they really want to find a human trafficker, I think they could probably do it quite easily. <laughs> uh, but they managed to get me. That's certainly the perception. Um, but it's, it's one of those charges that kind of sells itself. Oh, absolutely. And it doesn't matter if you're found guilty or not, right? You're a human right. trafficker forever. And, uh, but I do think that public consciousness is changing. I think with things like the, uh, there's been some very large court cases recently involving some very famous people in which women were caught lying, trying to slander men's names for rape and these kinds of things. And I don't think people believe it anymore. But that scares me to a degree because I think that the typical weapon, the standardized playbook is now failing. And I don't know what the new playbook's going to be. But it's almost it, like better the devil you know. That you're too famous. You're too successful. We don't like you. Call him a rapist or a human trafficker. Put him all over the news. Slander his name. Try and wreck his life. Now that nobody believes it, what's, what's the next move? What are they going to try next? Wouldn't it just have been easier to commit like a massive financial crime and defraud people of billions? Come up with like a fake cryptocurrency, call it like, I don't know, FTX, or just give a name to it. Yep, something, yeah, and something then, random. And then, you know, steal billions yeah. and get your parents involved and buy a bunch of real estate in the Bahamas, and then, like, you'd be sort of a hero, right? Oh, absolutely, and I would have certainly made a lot more money than TikTok, because I don't think TikTok even pays you for views, and if it certainly does, I never got a single transaction from it. Uh -huh. So it's a very interesting scenario, but if I was accused of a financial crime, my name would not be slandered. So no, of course. Well, of course not. You have the presumption of innocence. So to, just back to the, to the jail thing. So you're in with your brother. At, at the beginning, I was not. But towards the end, I was, yeah. What did you do all day? It's a good question. Um, I looked at the wall, stared at the wall, smoked cigarettes, lots of push-ups, read the Quran. Uh, you smoked cigarettes, did push-ups, and read the Quran. Basically, yes. And certainly had some introspective moments. Tried my best to get out. Tried my best to, to, via my small phone calls, understand what's happening in the outside world. Tried to make sure that the people I love and care about are taken care of because I'm the man of my family and I'm also the man of quite a large, I wouldn't say empire, but life. And there's a whole lot of people who rely on me. You know, you have staff and families. You have oh, children I, and I families. Know the feeling, yeah. So when you're plucked from that, it's kind of strange. You're in jail and you're concerned for yourself, but your primary concerns are also all your duties as a man. I have duties as, as a man. I don't want children to starve. You've got a whole tribe. No, I've got people to pay. So it was very, very frustrating, Const constantly trying to make sure everybody else, else was okay and feeling helpless. That's what hurt me the most. Make, I was trying to make sure everybody I love and care about was fine, and I wasn't as powerful as I should have been, and that was very upsetting, and especially if they were going to keep me there for years. I was having serious concerns about how I can feed the people I love. Did you ever come to the edge at all? No, I, I certainly had some days I was less happy than others, but I, I made sure that my mindset was built in a way that I could always be doing something constructive. And also, I think you get what you give in life. And if I ever felt particularly sad on a day, I would try very hard to make other people happy because if I made other people smile, I'd feel better. So even the dinner ladies or the prison guards, I'd try very hard just to make people smile. I know it sounds silly. Some of the prison no, guards, it doesn't. some of the prison guards were more open than others, but there was one, there was a couple of prison guards who were ice cold, who didn't want to say a word to me. And I'm like, Hey bro, your hair looks amazing. And you just stare at me like he wants to shut up. But, um, I just try my best to cheer people up, to cheer myself up. And as a man, all you can do is just find the resolve to continue doing the best you can in the current circumstance. So what were the other prisoners like? I don't want to insult Romania in any way. And I love this country and I chose to live here. But if I had to describe it for the people, for an American audience to understand, I don't think Romania and a lot of these countries have the same kind of mental health setup or the mental health support that a lot of Western nations have. So you end up in jail. Ooh. So I think a lot of, there was a lot of mental health problems inside the jail. So it was very similar. It wasn't just a jail. There was also a lot of mental health problems in there, which adds a new complexity and a new dimension to the suffering because there's just random screaming and there's suicide and there's... It's certainly not a very nice place to be. Oh, so it's, it's horrifying. Yeah, I don't want to go back. 
you hear the phrase Romanian prison and it, and it sounds tough. So it was what you would imagine. It is. And, and when this process is over, there's a lot more I will say. But um, I will say the staff were very nice to me. And I want to make this clear. I want to make it very clear that all the staff in the jail were very professional and very nice to me. I would almost say that they believed I was innocent and they understood that I didn't belong there. There was a, there was a semi-apologetic vibe to the way I was treated by the guards, if that makes sense. Yes. They understood very well. I don't think anybody, like I said, with a functioning brain believes that me at the age of 35 decided to steal TikTok money and ruin my entire life without financial motivation to girls who say they're not victims of anything. I don't think anybody with a brain. Well, the fact that you're not accused of a sex crime or yep. violence, which yep. I think most people don't really understand. Yep. And they can look it up. Yep. I mean, but you're not actually accused of Correct. rape. Correct. Selling anyone. Correct. Pimping. Correct. Okay. Um, that right there raises a lot of questions.